So, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello and enjoy your discount. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Spencer Colgan is wallpaper. Today, we're, this is video one of two videos of how to hang wallpaper on an accent wall after removing texture. This two-part video series is for the beginner. I will speak in an elementary form, describing each tool, describing each method in detail, so that the do-it-yourselfer is no longer intimidated by skim coating a wall, okay? No longer intimidated by hanging wallpaper by him or herself. No, 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 no. We're going to eliminate those fears, that apprehension, and we're gonna to speak directly to the 20 year old who picks up the tool for the first time. And I guarantee you, if you follow the methods in this video, you will hang your wallpaper like a pro. It may take you three days to do it, but I guarantee you, you are going to hang paper like a pro. Let's get into it. We're gonna first do part one of the video eliminating the texture, which in this case is orange peel on the wall. The second part of the video is going to be how to hang the wallpaper, how to plan the layout, where do you put your first sheet, how do you smooth it out, what tools are involved. Let me show you the texture. You've all seen it. If you grab an orange from the fruit store, you'll see it. It's orange peel. And we're gonna cover that and hang wallpaper over it. Why are we gonna cover this? Do you wanna see wallpaper over this? I don't. Do you think that this won't show through your wallpaper? It will. Will the air get trapped in these little nooks and crannies? Yes, it will. And if you're the pro and you're watching this, you're shaking your head, yes, yes, yes. Because the first thing the customer is going to do is say, I have air underneath my wallpaper. And what you should say is, you didn't want me to remove it because it cost a little extra. If you're the customer or the installer, get rid of the texture. Don't inherit the liability associated with hanging wallpaper over texture. If you do hang it over texture, tell the customer, I cannot guarantee that air will not get trapped between the wallpaper and these air pockets. Let's get on with the video. I gotta go thick. I gotta get it done by Monday. I'm gonna go thick. Keep doing this, keep making lines. Keep doing it, let's keep doing it. Lines, 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 lines. You're never gonna get rid of them. Stop going thick. Go thin, watch this. Wow. But there's a line, Spencer. I know. You made it. No more lines. Yes, there is. There's one more. Yeah, that's, that's the edge. No lines. In other words, all you did was fill in the lows. Let it dry. Don't touch it again. Don't do this. Stop. Don't do that. You messed it up. Get that off. That's what your first coat should look like, friends. That's it. Perfect. Stop right there. Okay, this is a hawk. It's just a metal plate. This is how we hold it, okay? Remember, I'm not talking down to anybody who's a veteran. This is for the do-it-yourself or the 20-something year old who just got their first house, the 30-something year old who just got their first house, they moved into their first place, they wanna do this. That's who I'm talking to. I wanna to talk to you and tell you I don't care who you are, you can do this. I'm talking to the person that doesn't know these tools, okay? This thing you're looking at right here is a hawk, and this is the compound. It's ready mixed joint compound, okay? And that's how it looks. Okay, let me turn the camera around. 
I like this because I can add water to it. Okay, that's the one I use. It's called the topping compound or ready mix. Okay, you can make your own, but that's with more experience. Let's talk to the newbie. The person is going to do an excellent job. I'm going to say, Spencer, your video saved me based on your video. I did my own job. I'm getting this every week on YouTube. So I know my videos are working for the person who has a little experience to the person who has none at all. And believe it or not, to the person who has been doing it for years. Now, this is something I learned along the way. I'm going to show you a trick. Now, this is a 10 inch taping knife. Do you see any spaces in there? I can't get close enough to the wall. Let me try to move over. You see any spaces between the metal and the texture? Anything, any light coming through there? You can see it, right? Okay, wouldn't you agree that the contact between the blade and the wall are the highs in this texture? I can't touch these, these, these nooks and these crannies. My blade is resting on the highs. So that's a high, that's a high. It's where the material is protruding out. But my fingernail can get in the lows, you see that? You skim coat, your blade can't touch the, the, the lows. My point is when you put this blade over a long span of texture, your blade is making contact and creating a plumb surface against which to drag your blade and fill in the lows. If you put peanut butter on a sandwich and drag it tight to the bread, you'll fill in all the little nooks and crannies of the bread. Same idea. Same exact idea. So, if you put compound on thick, look what happens. Very simple. Your blade starts lifting up. You know why? Your muscles aren't strong enough to drag a lot of compound along without doing this. It's hard to get the blade to touch the wall when you're dragging a lot of compound. Here's what happens. But if you put it on thin and drag the blade, necessarily common sense dictates you're only going to fill in the lows and you're not going to add to the surface. Let's go through that again. If I do it wrong, I put it on thick and I start doing this. I make, I make a bunch of whirls. I'm exaggerating. It will be closer like this. Look. But if you put on a little, and you drag it against the wall, you're gonna necessarily only build up the lows. And when it dries, you may have to put one more coat on it, but guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna be putting your blade on a plumb level, meaning straight. It's not like this. your blade will go against the new level, the new surface, and all of those spaces, look close. You see where the air or the light could get through there? You see that right in the, right in the middle of your screen? See that little one right there? You see it right there? You'll fill them in. Don't go thick. Watch this. Before we went on camera, I did this. Look right here. It's still wet. Watch this. <gasps> With one coat, there's no more passages for air or light. Because when I did it, I dragged it close to the wall. Now let's talk about the angle. Your wall is 180 degrees flat. My blade is at 90 degrees with the wall. 
Now it's at 45. Now it's at 20, 10, five, zero. The closer you hold your blade to 90 degrees with the wall, the better you'll be able to produce this. The closer you hold your blade to 10, five, and zero, this is what you're gonna get. The best you're gonna get. Stop doing it. Stop going 20 and below. 25, 20, 15, zero. Stop doing this. That's all you're gonna get, folks. You're spreading peanut butter on bread. Don't do it. Let's straighten this out. Watch the angle. Nobody skim coats at 90. 45? Yes, watch this. That's what you want. You're gonna hurt your hand if you do this, but at, at a 90, which would theoretically be ideal. Perfect, but it's not practical. So we go 45. With a lot of pressure going against the wall. No lap marks, no lines, no nothing. I want you to do this twice, and guess what you're gonna have? Perfection. In fact, I don't care if you never did it before. If you do what I say, you're not gonna have to sand it. Trust me when I tell you. Now, remind yourself throughout this process, you're not trying to get out all the lines. You're not trying to make it perfect yet. Get that out of your head. That's what's messing you up. And keep reminding yourself, watch the video over again, because here's what you're going to do. You're going to get good within five minutes. You're going to be good. You're going to get the feel of this. You're going to get the pressure down. And then here's what's going to happen. Your first mistake is going to be, I got this, I know what I'm doing, you're gonna go thick. And then you're gonna be struggling with the lines and I'm gonna tell you something, you forgot to go thin. I'm telling you what's gonna happen. So don't stop watching the video now. By the way, click like. That's right, come on, you can hit like. Hit the like button, you know you like the video. And I know I sound like Christopher Walken. Do you know? Did you? My favorite thing is now. Did you ever hear that you sound like I finished it off? Christopher Walken? Yeah, how'd you know? Well, your premise, did I ever hear it? Yeah, the answer is yes. I did hear it. I did hear it. And I contacted the Christopher Walken Corporation and I said, listen, I want money. You stole my voice. You sound like me, brother. I don't sound like you. I mean, think about it. Why do I sound like Christopher Walken? Maybe the dude sounds like me. You ever think of that? Okay, no problem. Okay. Spencer, you're making lines. Yeah, for you, not for me. I'm making lines to prove a point. You're too thick here. You're too thick. You want dust all over your house? You want to have to sand this? No. This is what you do. Remember the angle, pressure. That's what you want to see when you're done. That's right. Let's do it again. I'm overlapping, getting rid of the line I made. That's what you want to see. 
Look at the angle. Okay. I'm making lines because I'm using my two hands to video this and apply this. So I don't have anywhere. I don't have my hawk. I'm using the wall as my hawk. But the instruction remains the same. The angle and the pressure. Pull down. Keep doing it till you get rid of your line. Just get rid of the line. Lines mean you went too thick. But if you've done that and your wall has a belly or it has a bump in it, you'll make a line. Don't worry about the line you made. Because if you keep going over it, I left that line there, you see? There comes a point where you say, no, 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 just leave that there. If it's obviously an excess line where you've gone not tight enough or at the wrong angle, get rid of the line. Because that means it's an excess line. Lines are called by, caused by different things. And you want to get rid of the line if it's due to excess. Okay? You see, if your wall is not perfectly flat, then there's going to come a point at which you're pulling your compound on a part of the wall which has a different depth across the span of your blade. So over here might be nice and flat. Over here is a belly. It's going to be thicker here. Let me, let, me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Argument's sake. This is on our wall. We, we compound down here, right? So it's going to be thicker where this groove goes in, right? I know it's a terrible example, but the point is that that might happen on the span of your 10 to 12 inch blade that you're using. And consequently, picture that the, the, the issue is at the end of your blade, you'll have a line. You'll know when you start doing it if your lines are caused by excess, like here, or they're caused by different inflections in the wall. If they're slight, leave them alone. Let them dry. They shave off like talcum powder on your shirt after you sprinkle talcum powder on yourself. Don't worry about this. Okay? You'll know when it's an excess. See, that's an excess. Look at that. That's obvious. It's all right. That's what you want right there. Let that dry. Don't keep going over it. Look at this. I haven't sanded this. This is your work, not mine. This is what you should be getting. This, is, this isn't brain surgery. That's what you're going to get. It's super smooth. And you can do this after 10 minutes of trial and error. Now we're going to go over this a second time because it's nearly perfect. And you can do this. Don't call a professional. Do this yourself and save money. A couple of other tricks or points of interest. Notice the position of my compound. It's in the middle, right? Watch how it lays out. This is strategic to do this. Do you see how it doesn't exceed the boundaries of my taping knife? Why is that important? Why is that important? Well, here's why. See this adjacent wall? I believe it's right there. Watch this. Watch this. Let's put the compound at the end of the blade. Okay? You agree it's mostly at the end? Here, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna draw our boundary to the wall. Watch this. Watch this. Just bear with me, okay? Okay. We imprudently put all of our compound at the edge. We're trying to keep it off the wall. And that's our wall, right there, that line. I'm a newbie. I got this, Spencer taught me, but he didn't teach me to avoid this problem. Watch this. It's all over your wall now. Don't do that. Okay? So, the placement of your compound on the knife is key. 
Same thing goes for the other side. If I do this on the left side of the wall, you don't want that issue happening, so you want to keep your compound toward the middle so that when you spread it out, it only goes within an inch of the boundaries of your taping knife. Now, there's one other thing. One other thing. Did you hit the like button? Ah, oh, come on. Please hit the, uh, I'm not gonna go forward yet. Please hit the like button, I'm waiting. Thank you. Thank you for everybody who just hit it. Oh, by the way, subscribe. Hit the little bell too, so you can get all the videos. Okay, let's get back. Now, watch this. Let's say I got an issue. As I go along, Spencer, something's happened on my wall. I, ever, I, I went then, I went then, I, I did what you said. I went then. I keep getting lines, brother. This isn't thin, by the way. I'm just talking while I'm doing this. I'm getting thinner, 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 thinner. Okay, now I'm gonna make it super thin. Okay. Spencer, I keep getting lines. Every time I go down, I make a slight line. I make that line, then I cover that up. I make another line. Okay. That's happening to you. We're gonna lift the blade. We're not gonna use the entire blade. See that? We're gonna lift it a bit, watch this. See that? So this definitely is making lines. You're going thin, you're following that rule. But if that keeps happening, you wanna avoid that. You're gonna put pressure on one of the edges right there and you're gonna lift that, see that? Watch this. Okay, so we wanna get, I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna go from my left to my right. So here's what I'm doing. Full contact. Now, I wanna eliminate these successive lines. This one and that one. Watch this from the aerial view. I'm not touching. Wow, I got rid of the lines. Do it again. Wow, I didn't make a line this way and I got rid of the one this way. How'd you do that? I don't know. They're all gone though. But that's advanced, that's advanced. Try to avoid trying to do that until you get the full knack of how to skim coat. Because you might go nuts trying to do that. I'm telling you, it's just something you learn as you go along, okay? But if you can achieve this on your first coat, and I know you can, I don't care who you are, how old you are, how young you are. You've never heard of joint compound in your life. You're looking at something you can do. So, I'll show you how it looks. Slow, and then I'll speed it up to show you that your wrist might hurt after a while, if you're new at it, but this is how the body and the mechanics works when what I just showed you up close is applied over the entire uh, space of the wall. Those are the mechanics involved. It's important to see up close what you're doing in theory and then in practice, and then to see how it's applied over the entire wall. Remember the angle now. Remember the angle. Your fingers also, you may find that they will help relieve the stress on the wrist from putting all that pressure on the taping knife. This will give you a more accurate application of pressure using these two fingers pressing down as you hold the taping knife in your hand, using these two fingers to press down. It'll make the nooks and crannies fill in perfectly and it will give you a more thin coat. Uh, but you might take too, off if you put, too much off if you put too much pressure with those fingers. But anyway, let's see how it's done on uh, regular speed and then we'll pick it up to full speed or we'll, we'll make it go really fast. Okay, you're against the opposing window in the same room. Let's go. Okay, I'm speaking to the newbie. I'm using a smaller knife to scoop the compound out of the bucket. It just makes it easier for me. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in the bucket.
I spread my legs out because it takes the pressure off of my back. So my legs are spread out. My arms are spread out too because I want to drag it and go at least four feet wide. So I'm spreading out. I want to do this. I don't want to stand there doing this. It's going to hurt my back. Spread out. My arm span is at least four feet. The average person, right? Four to five feet, spread out. Lean over, you just gave yourself another foot. By the time we get all the way over here, you're almost at six feet. It's a lot of space, but that's efficiency as well. I want to show you what I just did. Let's go. Spreading out. I started out putting it on thick. Now I'm going to go back over everything I just did. I might change the direction in a perpendicular direction. So I went from side to side. Now I might go up and down. Depends. Okay. And that's how it looks. After I swiped the wall, I swiped the excess on my taping knife onto the edge of this so that I wouldn't keep slumping it up, putting it back on the wall. So I swiped it on the wall, put the excess on my hook, went up there with a clean blade, swiped it against the wall, took the excess off with my hook, and so on and so forth. Now let's get the excess off and knock down those lines with the same angle I showed you, go thin. Looks perfect. Not just because I'm doing it. Notice I went backwards. The hand gets tired, okay? So this is the way I put my thumb here, and I went this way. Look, you know, because this is the way I was talking about on the last frame. If you, you can control the pressure by putting it down, compound on this side, you can, you can use it this way. Or, with that, like a tennis racket, you can hit this way, you can hit this way, you can hit this way, you can hit this way. Same thing with a taping knife. You can use a taping knife with the same muscles tennis players use to swing their racket. Okay? And so that's what I do. This way you ease all of the muscles in your arm. Because what happens is over time, you wind up with enlarged muscles.
Let's bring you up close. Now, you're a new person at this. You're doing great. It actually looks like your work and my work are the same thing. Now, here's your only problem. Corners. Let me show you how to handle them. We're going to protect the adjacent walls with frog tape. It's two inch wide tape. It's known for not tearing off the paint. But be careful, it may tear off yours. So there it is. So you're doing great, you're not, your lines are minimum, you're filling it in, it's, it's, it's smooth, you're, you're doing a great job. But then you come up to the walls and you're slopping them up. Well, I take my taping knife. If you don't use tape, you're gonna get it on the adjacent wall. And although it comes off, you use a dark paint like this, you'll take some of the paint off with it, with your sponge. Wow, see that? I'll go right up to the wall, right up to the wall. And you know what? You always wind up with a little compound on the wall. What's that? Okay, so don't, don't get upset. But this will avoid most of it. Then, after I go horizontal, perpen, all right, so this, if I go perpendicular from the wall, I'm gonna go, try to go parallel. Who just asked Siri or Alexa what perpendicular meant? Be honest. Who did? Come on, you could be honest. You know what I'm thinking of getting? I'm patenting Ask Spencer. Because I know just as much as Siri and Alexa. Did I ever tell you that? Hey Spencer, what's the weather like today? Sunny and breezy, 60 degrees. Okay, see that? So if you get Google telling you if you want the app, ask Spencer. Please sign up for it. I'll answer all your questions. I promise. Okay. Don't go too close to that wall. And notice the angle at which I'm holding my blade. Check it out. Oh, why did I switch? Why did I switch to a 10 degree angle, Spencer? Why did I do that? Here's why. Your angle, your, your blade is touching up against these. The way to eliminate this, that's caused by this, these bumps, the closer you go to the wall, the less chance you have of going over and over and over and over those bumps. Because if you hold your blade out here, what do you expose yourself more to? Right? So when we do this, isn't it true that I'm exposing myself less to that? That's why I do it. Go ahead, you can say thank you, Spencer. You can do it. Don't feel funny. I'm getting calls lately. Hi, Spencer Colton, can I help you? <laughs> this is not Spencer Colton, is it? Hello, can I help you? I'm from New York, you know, we tend to get a little hasty. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, 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 uh, 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 you get a bunch of that. I, is this Spencer Colgan? Yes, yes, hi. Now I get it, I know what's happening. They're like, I watch, I know you watch my YouTube. Yeah, what can I do for you? I, my mom and I, Please ask your question. My, my mom and I, we watch every one of your videos. Oh yeah? Did you watch the one where I installed the Schumacher clowns? Um, <laughs> well, we don't watch all of them. <clears throat> but I love your videos. Why'd you say you watch all of them? Did you watch the one where I installed the colon sun with the with the, the uh, waterfall? Uh, I don't think I saw that one. Okay, 
So don't, don't lie to me. What do you want? I just want to know what you meant in that video when you were using the syringe. What'd you watch? Two of my videos? I, I think I watched three. Okay. If your hand is a little unsteady and you're getting compound on the wall beyond two inches, you can, you can go to a hand masker if you want to go through that expense. And you may be a, a professional just starting out, so this is a good tool to get. And this will cover more ground in the same amount of time. Let me show you. Just pull this right up. And you can cover as much wall as you want quickly. Let me show you. So if you want to get a more sophisticated tool, feel free to do that. But definitely put some tape there.
The fan is absolutely essential for the do-it-yourselfer who may, despite the instructions given in this video, go a little thick on the wall and cause the drying time to be excessive. The fan will quickly dry this joint compound very nicely and quickly, especially in an air-conditioned room, meaning whether it's cold outside or hot, the air humidity is reduced significantly. You can't have a humid room and expect this to dry quickly. So you want this directly on the wall so that you can start seeing white, like in the middle there, middle of your screen. In the middle of your screen is wet. And so to test it, because we're generally instructing new people in this video to test it. Go up to it and stick your nail into it. If you make a depression, it's because it's wet. I don't want to do it. I'm, I'm pressing where it's dry. But where it's wet, you'll make an impression. Uh, when your first coat is done and it looks like this, you've done a great job. You've done a great job. And if you're working with textured wallpaper, here's what you do. When this dries, simulate installation by wetting your product with paste. Five minutes later, put it on the wall. Smooth it out and see if you can see your previously uh, applied texture, meaning the texture that was on the wall See if you can see it or feel it. If you have textured wallpaper and you've done a job like this, you don't need a second coat. But if you have super smooth wallpaper and your texture is still coming through and you can still feel it, you want to give that a second coat and I'll show you briefly how to do that. But this must be dry before you do a second coat. Or if you have your first coat applied and it looks excellent, and you have what's called a shimmering wallpaper, which is a shiny product. Make sure that your pro you, you have at least two coats of joint compound on it because your shimmering wallpaper will literally reflect everything shining on it like this. And so any bumps underneath it will reveal the bumps. And so if you have shiny wallpaper, or what's called shimmering wallpaper, two different things. You can have a foil wallpaper that is not shimmering. But shimmering generally means that the entire wallpaper has shininess to it. You must have a perfectly flat surface. But this will do for most of your wallpaper right here. That will do. We've eliminated this. That's what it was, remember? And we've learned in this video, with one coat, how to do this. It's smooth. This is smooth. And so all you're going to do is apply the same methodology that we did here The only thing I would ask you to do on your second coat is to put some water in that. And I'll show you the consistency that I would use, if I were you, in order to go with a second coat. When you get up to the ceiling, you're going to apply a similar principle of application of compound in consideration of keeping the compound off the ceiling. So, protecting the ceiling, I'm going right up against the ceiling, dragging downward. Trying to get right into that corner, dragging downward. Get right into the corner, drag down. Now, that is that one. Then, keeping my blade very close to the wall at a 10 degree, I go, parallel 
with the textured ceiling so that I don't put the bumps from the side of my blade onto my application of compound. You see how I'm trying to avoid bumping into the texture on the ceiling? By keeping my blade close to my wall? Well, that's what I did on the wall, right? And that's how I go about doing that. And if I do get bumps onto my wall from the textured ceiling, I simply wipe them off. You see how I'm, key I'm pointing the blade against the tape? Since the ceiling is very textured and I'm putting the texture onto the wall as a result, do you see my response? It's to take the, the blade off of the wall and just bring the point to it to avoid clashing with the texture. Then I just clean it up, okay? And that's what you want. Now for the beginner, you're left with a bucket that may be a lot more sloppy than what you're looking at. But if you spent $14 on this bucket of compound, you may wanna hold on to it for a few months or give it to somebody who can use it if you're done with it. But you don't want to hand it over like this. You see the sides? The residue on the sides gets dry. And if you should use this good stuff here with this stuff dry on the sides, it will be a disaster for you. You'll want to throw it out. You'll be dragging these rocks in your new application on your next job. So we want to give this a clean out. We want to get all of that stuff knocked down, wet, and into the center of the bucket and have these walls perfectly clean. So what I did was, I put some water down there. So it's expensive, it puts too much water, you ruined it. Not true. We're just using it to dip into, clean up the sides. Now, if you just left your water in the center there, you could keep it there for a long time. Properly covered, it's not going to evaporate. Although over too long a time, you may get some black mold or certainly mildew forming, right? But now my sides are clean. I don't have to worry about knocking crumbs into my compound. Does this water necessarily mix with the joint compound underneath it? No. You dump out the excess water, and that's a perfect amount of wetness to leave over your compound. You see, it keeps your compound moist, and your sides are clean. Now, in a separate bucket, you're gonna use one of these dollar store brushes, great tool, to clean your hawk. And I just like to do it in quadrants. That's the first quadrant. I go from the center to the corner. I turn it around. You definitely wanna get this off of your tools. You know why? You go to use them again. It's very hard to get it off. Some guys I've seen sand it off. So they'll stand there at the beginning of their job and they'll sand off the dry compound. But where does that sand dust go? Except for the lungs. And that's the way you want it to look when you put it away. Now, if you watch the Vancouver Carpenter, he leaves this dirty until his next job. But I would rather not do that. And then you turn it around and you want to clean off the sides as well. Because it gets on the tip. 
that's all. You make it nice and clean. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of my tools. So let's go in and check out the wall. I'd like to start hanging paper. But you and I both know that your wall or mine may not be 100%. And so after we have the entire wall 98% completed, we go in with a different mixture now. Same, same bucket, but water added because it may not be 100% dry. If this, is too, if this is too dry, you may pull your curing compound that's already on the wall, then you create another mess. The wetter this is, the less you'll disturb the compound that's curing on the wall. Let's go in and see what I'm talking about. Now our fan stays on. We grab a cup of coffee, and we see that our dark spots are indeed in need of curing. So if I go over that with compound that's too dry, I'm gonna pull that. Hmm, there's something that needs to get filled in. Oh, remember I was explaining about the rocks and the compound and how to clean out your bucket? Well, if a rock should come into your compound and you drag it, that's what you're gonna get. That's a significant scar. You want to fill that in before you proceed. But if you determine for the most part that your wall is smooth, leave it. Do not put more on. Less work is good. Enjoy your day. Try to get done today, not tomorrow or next weekend. Don't overdo it. Only put a second coat if after rubbing your hand up and down on your dry wall, See if you can feel the bumps. If you can feel the bumps and they're only mild, put your wallpaper up against it and see if you can feel them underneath your wallpaper. If you can't, don't kill yourself. Hang your paper after you prep the wall, which I will show you to do on the next step. So basically, this, this part of the job will be a quick one. You see that? So we're gonna fill it in like this sideways and then drag down nice and tight that's filled in let me show you again i put it on thick and then look at the angle of my my blade remember the higher the degree the more you pull off this is when you want to start using 90 degree angle applications you see, I went close to just get the compound on the wall, but look what I'm doing. Look at the angle with which I'm swiping my compound. The second coat is different. See that? The second coat is different. You now, your nooks and crannies are filled in. There's no need to be dragging it at a different angle. Once again, You're trying to put on the least amount of compound. Now remember I said your compound should be wet, unless you disturb. Let me show you how you would disturb this, watch this. Oh, I disturbed it, not good. Actually, that'll make it dry quicker, because you knocked down those highs that were really wet. In 15 minutes, all of that stuff is gonna turn white. But, if you wanna cheat and expedite this process, Watch this. Watch this. I spread it on thin, nice and thin. I want to get it. I'll put it up there a bit. Let me get some more compound. Okay, let's put some more on. Not more on, like somebody's a moron, but more on. Wow, not too shabby, right? Now watch the angle. Watch this. It's not 90. line there so our issue is we got to fill in on both sides of the line right 
because that's our bump right there. It must have been something on the wall, right? So look, I fill it in like this, watch this. You can see it there. But look at how I drag my knife. Look, watch this. I fill in on each side of that line, making that completely disappear. Do you understand why I went that direction? Because the valleys were vertical, they weren't horizontal. So the only way you can fill them in is to drag your knife vertically, filling them in. That's why we went vertical here. Now I'm going across it, but I'm gonna fill it in vertically. See that? Look at that, look how nice it is. Okay, and that's how I'm gonna go around and tweak. I call this tweaking my skin coat. Do not put too much on. And listen, folks, you wanna hear the best of it? Watch this. I don't care if you never did this before. If you do what I told you in this video, Take your time. Granted, you may not get through it fast, but take your time. You won't have to sand. You will not have to sand. If something's a little rough, take a wet sponge and just with it very wet, just back and forth. And you'll see that you will have accomplished this like a pro without sanding and you've never done it before. Trust me, trust yourself and do it. Okay, continuing to tweak my job going around it's really wet okay that's all pull that stuff nice and tight the tighter you pull it the less you'll have to deal with smoothing it out after it dries okay you can see I missed there that's because the wall goes in and out I didn't miss this but my blade skipped over it because that part of the wall goes in and it hit itself from my blade. You see the space underneath my blade? You see? Watch. And that's how I know my blade skipped over it because if you could feel these walls, you'd understand what I mean. They're a little wavy, just a bit. Ah, uh, now look at that. Bad. Let me show you how to fix that. Okay, so based on your instruction, my, my lows are going this way, up and down. You see what I mean? So in order to fill this in, you have to go on the side of this high, this side and that side, to fill that in so that you don't see that bump. So this is how you do it. Okay, I'm just spreading it on first. Now I'm going to come in at a tight angle. Look. Watch this. Again. Where was my problem? I don't know, it was somewhere in the middle, but it's gone. The point is it's gone. Do you see those dark spots going this way? Because I dragged my blade this way because the lows were going this way. When I filled it in, the compound correctly filled it in going this way, evidenced by the fact that you can see wet compound horizontal, horizontally. And that's because that the compound that filled in this line going this way is thick right now. And because it's thick, it's wet. And it's filled in, it's flat. Nice. What else can we do? How about that? Trust me, the first time you do this, you're gonna become a pro. Now, I think I started telling you before, I, this is what I see professionals doing. I had a guy working for me who didn't know how to skim coat. And he did it every day. There are people out there, say, I've been doing this for years, and I want to say, well, you've been doing mistakes for years, years. I'm serious. People, you know, they don't mean, the, look, the truth of the matter is, in life, we know very little. If you're an expert in heart surgery, you only know heart surgery. You don't know anything else. If you're an expert in wallpaper, you don't know anything else but wallpaper. Very few people have vast knowledge. Okay? If you want to check out somebody who had a vast knowledge of all of the sciences, 
Look up St. Gregory the Great. His knowledge about things was so vast, but one day it was all taken away from him. Check it out. So anyway, we want to become experts in the application of compound. And so we can do it simply by following what I showed you on this video. Remember, 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 do not go thick. It's very easy to forget because this is strenuous on the hand. So I started to tell you, I had a guy working for me. Oh, I skim coat all the time. Okay, go ahead. Well, this is what he was doing. Let me show you. So he would get to my job at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he, he would try to skim coat a ball like this. It took him all day. It took him all day. I kid you not. This is what he would do. I'm going to float this wall. Oh, it's not going on flat for me. Let me try it again. Oh, yeah, it's flat there. You agree it's flat? Not really. Take a look. This is what he would do. It would take five hours to dry. He would put a second coat on, talk on the phone with his wife, upset my customers. I said, get lost. You're done. You're finished. I said, you don't know how to skim coat. Yes, I do. I've been doing it for years. I said, and you've been doing it wrong for years. You're putting on this much when all you need to put on is that much. You don't know what you're doing. You, you, and and you're, you're milking it. You're making it take forever because the thicker you put it on, the longer it's going to take to dry. Common sense. Okay. I'll finish this part of the video. I'm going to make this part one of two. This video will be part of a two-part video series on hanging wallpaper on an accent wall after skim coat part one. The second one will be named the second, uh, the, the, the same as the first, but just part two of hanging the, uh, the wallpaper. And so if somebody wanted to uh, brush up their skills on skim coat, they can just watch this video. Or look down on the link in the description of this video and you will see part two of the completed series of this two-part video. Thank you for watching my channel. Here's what I'm gonna do after I hang up with you good folks. Maybe I'll incorporate it into the video. I'm going to seal this compound after this dries. There are many things with which you can seal this joint compound. One of them is guards, G-A-R-D-Z. It is the go-to product of many professionals in the wallpaper business. Another thing that you could use is, and that's, it's less widely acclaimed by professionals, is Zinser 123. But you can't hang the paper the same day. Guard, you can. Zinser 123, you can. And so, why do you want to wait till the next day? Just use guards. G A R D Z from Zinser. joint compound with a barrier. Now there are many things you can use. Shields clear, S-H-I-E-L-D-Z, clear. You may need to use shields universal. Check out the labels for the different uses of those products. Shields, S-H-I-E-L-D-Z. Shields Clear and Shields Universal. You may want to use Guards, G-A-R-D-Z. I prefer Guards, G-A-R-D-Z. But many professionals go with Shields Clear. You can also use a product called Pro 999, P-R-O 999. And that's made from the Roman company. But what you're doing by sealing this joint compound is to fill the pores of this 
application of joint compound. It seals it. It fills it in and seals it, and when this is dry, you can hang your wallpaper directly over it. And when you take it down, you'll be happy that you sealed your joint compound because, number one, the wallpaper will come off with ease, and secondly, your wall will not come off with ease. Your wall will remain intact along with the skin coat. But if you put wallpaper over poorly treated or prepared walls, you'll take the skin off of the wall. You'll take that blue paint right off of the wall. That paste will pull it off with the wallpaper. Let's let this dry and that will conclude this video. Part one of two videos, how to hang an accent wall for beginners, parts one and two. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel.